The first step is to calculate the yearly averages. So here we have some data and for this year 2003, in the first quarter we had 72, then 64, then 63, then 75. So my first step is to find out for 2003 what was the average. So how do I find the average, the mean? I add everything up and divide by how many I have. So I'm going to do 72 plus 64 plus 63 plus 75 divided by 4 because there are 4 of them. And I get 68.5. So that is the average for this year, 2003. Now what I'm going to do is work out this sales figure as a proportion of the yearly average. So I'm going to say 72 divided by 68.5. Now because 72 is greater than 68.5, this number here, these sales in quarter one, were better than average. So my number is going to be one point something. So 72 divided by 68.5 gives me 1.051. So 1.051 is this yearly proportion. It's the proportion of 72 divided by 68.5. Now I'm going to do that going along for these other results. So 64 divided by 68.5 which is 0.934. And because 64 is less than 68.5, I was expecting 0 point something. Now 63 divided by 68.5 gives me 0 0.920. And 75 divided by 68.5, 1.000. Now if I just had one year's worth of data, if I just had 2003 and I didn't have this stuff down here, I could stop here because these numbers would now be my seasonal indices. This is a seasonal index for quarter one in 2003. This is a seasonal index for quarter two in 2003. However, I in fact have been given a couple more years here. I've got 2004 and 5 as well. So I'm going to need to factor these extra years into my calculation of an overall seasonal indice for quarter one. So what I'm going to do is the same step for 2004 and work out these yearly proportions. So the first step is to find a yearly average that I can divide everything by. So I'm going to say 75 plus 66 plus 64 plus 89 divided by 4 because that's how many there are and I get 73.5. So that's the yearly average for 2004. Now let's figure out some proportions, some yearly proportions for these 2004 figures. So 75 divided by 73.5 and 66 divided by 73.5 and 64 divided by 73.5 and 89 divided by 73.5 gives me. So filling those in 1.020 Now I have yearly proportions for 2004. Let's do the same thing for 2005. So the first step is to work out the average for that year. So 76 plus 68 plus 67 plus 95. Add them all up and divide by how many there are, which is 4, and I get 76.5. So that's the yearly average. Now to determine these yearly proportions, I want to divide the data, the actual piece of information, by that yearly average. So 76 divided by 76.5, 68 divided by 76.5, 67 divided by 76.5, and 95 divided by 76.5. And I can tell that this one will be slightly less than 1 because 76 is just less than 76.5. This will be less than 1 because 68 is less than. This will be less than 1. And this will be one point something because this proportion here, 95, is greater than 76.5. Those are the figures I get. So I'll fill those in here for my yearly proportions. And now that I have yearly proportions for all three of the years of data that I have, I can work out an overall seasonal index for each of these quarters. Now, to find the seasonal index, I average these three yearly proportions. So 
Finding the average 1.051 plus 1.020 plus 0.9993. Add them up and divide by how many there are, which is 3. 1.021. So that is the seasonal index for quarter 1. Now for quarter 2, average these three numbers. Add them up and divide by how many there are. 0 0.934 plus 0 0.898 plus 0 0.888 all divided by 3 gives me 0 0.907. So that's the seasonal index for quarter two. What about quarter three? And finally, for this last quarter, we have 1.183. A handy rule to know is that the seasonal indices, the seasonal index numbers, will always add up to the number of time periods you have. So if it's quarters, and therefore there are four of them in a year, your seasonal indices will all add up to four. If it's months, and there are 12 of them, then your seasonal indices will all add, uh, add up to 12. If it's days of the week, and there are seven time periods, your seasonal indices will add up to seven, and so on. So let's just double check these. We have 1.021 plus 0 0.907 plus 0 0.889 plus 1.183. What do you know? If you put that on your calculator, it adds up to exactly 4. Ta-da! Once you know what the seasonal index numbers are, whether because you've worked it out like this or because you've been given them at the start of the question, you can then de-seasonalize this data. And what de-seasonalizing does is it smooths it out. It takes away some of the seasonal fluctuations that occur. And the way you do that is using this formula. The de-seasonalized value equals the actual value divided by the seasonal index. So for this 72 figure here, we want to do the actual 72 divided by its seasonal index, which is 0.021. So I'm going to say 72 divided by 1.021, which is 71, when I round that to the nearest whole number. For this 2004 quarter one figure of 75, I'm going to say 75 divided by its seasonal index, which is 1.021, and I get 73. For this last one, 76 divided by 1.021, I get 74, rounding it to the next whole number. Over here, my 64 becomes 64 divided by 0 0.907, 71. For this 66 divided by 0 0.907, I will get 73. And the 68 divided by 0 0.907 becomes 75. Deseasonalizing these last few, I'll have 63 divided by 0 0.889, 64 divided by 0 0.889, and 67 divided by 0 0.889, and then over here, 75 divided by 1.183, 89 divided by 1.183, and 95 divided by 1.183. And there's my deseasonalized data. When we plot those two sets of time series data on the same axis, though, like this, you can see what deseasonalizing is doing for us. This is the actual data here in the red, and it's got some really big fluctuations, some high peaks and troughs because it's quite seasonal data. And this blue line is much flatter, it's much straighter. We've taken out some of that crazy fluctuation going on so that we can see what's really happening with these sales figures. And what I can see is that over time it is got it is increasing slightly, it's got a slight positive trend which is good, you want sales to go up. But the other thing I notice is that this quarter four, this first quarter four, so this was quarter one, two, three, four of 2003, and then we had one, two, three, four of 2004, and then we had one, two, three, four of 2005. So this point here at x equals four corresponds to the fourth quarter in 2003. 
and deseasonalized, it was actually very low according to the overall trend. So this point here, it looks like their sales were up around about that time period. But because that's the end of the year, that's maybe Christmas sales and Christmas sales are normally up here somewhere. So this year they actually had quite low sales deseasonalized. See that? So that's the kind of stuff that deseasonalizing the data can tell us. You can put trend lines, regression lines, onto time series data in the same way you can with any of those other scatter plots that we looked at earlier in the core chapter. And the three ways of doing that were by eye, which means looking at it and just plonking a line on, using the three median method for regression, and using the least squares method. So if you're asked to fit a trend line to a time series plot, pay attention to which method they've asked you to use and then just draw your line on as though it were any other kind of scatter plot. So if they ask you to do least squares, you put the data into your calculator and you say lin reg a plus b x. If they've asked you to do three median, you split it into three groups and then you find the median horizontally and vertically in each section. Use the far left and the far right to get the gradient and then you slide a third of the way towards the middle point. And if they ask you to do by eye, you just have a look at your dots and you kind of go well hey and you put a line on wherever you think it kind of works. So say your time series question now asks you to determine the equation of the least squares trend line for the deseasonalized data and hence calculate the deseasonalized sales prediction for the first quarter of 2006. Now this is what our deseasonalized data looked like. So what we're going to do is work out a least squares trend line for this deseasonalized data as opposed to the original actual data. So I'm going to put this into my calculator in the lists and I'm going to use this first point here as x equals 1. So 2003 quarter 1 is x equals 1. So I'll have 173, 271, 371, 463, 573, 673 and so on going down the line. Once you've entered that into your calculator, you ask your calculator for a least squares regression line. And you get y equals 0.78x plus 67.68. Now we can use this equation to figure out a deseasonalized sales prediction for the first quarter of 2006. So these quarters that I had here, this was x equals 1, x equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what is x going to be in the first quarter of 2006? It's the next one along here, 2006 quarter 1 would be 13. So for x equals 13, I'm going to put that into this equation. I have y equals 0.78 times 13 plus 67.68, which gives me 77.82. So rounding that up to the next whole number, I'm going to call that 78. The original question actually stated that these figures were in thousands of dollars, thousands of sales. So the answer here will be 78 thousand dollars worth of sales for the first quarter of 2006. Say you are now asked using this deseasonalized sales prediction estimate the actual sales during the first quarter of 2006. So the difference here is one of these has been deseasonalized. It's had that seasonal index number applied to it to smooth it out. We want to know what the actual sales might be. So going back a step so our deseasonalized sales prediction was 77.82. Now to go back towards actual sales we're going to need those seasonal index numbers. Remember these were our actual data figures in this table and these were the seasonal index numbers we worked out. Now we're talking about the first quarter of 2006 which is this quarter here. So the seasonal index number that we're going to play around with is this one. And remember that formula deseasonalized value equals the actual divided by the seasonal index. We can use that to go back the other way. If I want to know what the actual is, I want to get actual by itself on one side of the equals. I'm just going to get rid of this seasonal index by timesing it over there. I'll have deseasonalized 
times the seasonal index will give me the actual figure. So the deseasonalized figure was 77.82 times the seasonal index for that quarter, which was 1.021, will give me my actual figure. 77.82 times 1.021 gives me 79.45. So if I'm going to round that up to the nearest whole number, to this nearest thousand, the actual sales during the first quarter of 2006 will be 79,000. And this is how seasonal index questions might look on an exam. This question is from the 2006 exam one and questions 11, 12 and 13 all related to the following seasonal index table. The table shows the seasonal indices for the monthly unemployment numbers for workers in a regional town. The seasonal index for October is missing from the table. The value of the missing seasonal index is. Now remember I said the seasonal index numbers must add up to how many time periods there are. Because this is monthly there are 12 all up so these numbers along here 1.3 plus 1.21 plus 1 plus 0.95, these numbers must add up to 12. So to figure out what October is, we just say 12 minus all of these numbers. So put that into your calculator and you'll get 0 0.98, which makes the answer D. The next question said, the actual number of unemployed in the regional town in September is 330. So here's September, we're talking about this time period here. The deseasonalized number of unemployed in September is closest to. Okay, so remember our formula deseasonalized equals the actual divided by the seasonal index. So here we know that the actual is 330. And we know the seasonal index for September is 0.94. So whack that into your calculator and you'll get 351. So the answer is C. The third and final question that related to this seasonal index table said, a trend line that can be used to forecast the deseasonalized number of unemployed workers in the regional town for the first nine months of the year is given by deseasonalized number equals 373.3 minus 3.38 times the month number, where month one is January, month two is February, and so on. The actual number of unemployed for June is predicted to be closest to. Okay, so here we have a formula which is giving us the deseasonalized number. And from that, we're going to work out what the actual number is. So the first step is to use this formula to work out the deseasonalized number, and then we'll convert it to an actual. So if we're trying to find the unemployed for June, what month number is that? Now January was 1, February was 2, March was 3, April was 4, May was 5, makes June number 6. So the month number that we're going to plug in here is 6. So we have equals 373.3 minus 3.38 times 6 and we get 353.02. So that is my deseasonalized figure for June. Now to convert a deseasonalized to an actual, which I'm actually trying to find, I use the formula deseasonalized equals the actual divided by the seasonal index. Now I'm trying to find the actual, so I need to get the actual by itself with actual equals something. So if I'm trying to get the actual by itself on one side of the equals, I'm going to times this seasonal index away. Because the operation here, it's been divided, I just do the opposite. I times it over here and I get deseasonalized times the seasonal index equals the actual. So using these figures, I'll have 353.02 times the seasonal index, which for June was 0 0.86. And that will give me the actual which is 303.5972. My answers have been rounded to whole numbers here. So what's 303.5972 rounded to a whole number? 304. So the answer is A.